Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Poth on Programming video log, and today I'm going to go over this little example that I made to showcase top-down tile-based collision detection in JavaScript. So as you can see, I got my, my square little guy, my yellow guy here, and I'm moving him around, and I've got some pixel-perfect collision detection and response between these tiles. And I'm using the method that I went over in my last tutorial, and I'm going to go over some parts of that again today for this tutorial. So you kind of get an idea of what's going on here. And so I'm just going to jump right into the code. I'm not going to go over controller display. I'm just going to go over what's inside the game object, and that's all my game logic, all my collision detection code. Um, once again, take a note that inside the player object, I am recording the old x and y positions. This is used to calculate the vector of movement that the player is traveling on between frames of animation. So that being said, the next thing that I changed inside of the player object is I added these functions. All they do is just get the different sides of the player, and they're kind of redundant. I figured, though, that it would be cool if I had some functions to just, instead of just seeing this inside the collision code and making it look more complicated, you'll just see stuff like bottom and left, and all it does is represent the different sides of the player. So now I'm going to come down a little bit more and go over the new tiles that I programmed for this example. So ones are just ceiling tiles. They're all the tiles up here. And actually, if I come into the example, the output actually shows you the value of the last tile you collided with. So you can see that I'm colliding with the top, and that's a one. And these are all ones on the ceiling. If I go over to the left, that's going to be a two. In the center here, I've got two five tiles. So that's these tiles that do collision on all sides. And each tile has its own set of boundaries. So for example, the one tile only has a boundary on the bottom side. So if I come in here and I put a one tile where this five tile is, put a one right there, save it, come over here, refresh my screen. Now this becomes a one tile instead of a five tile. And since it's a ceiling tile, it does collision on the bottom. But on the other sides, it doesn't do a thing. So I can go through it on all sides except for the bottom side. And the important, th the important thing to note about this collision method that I'm showing you guys is collision is only detected if a player object is entering into a collision tile. So that's the reason I can walk out of this tile, but I can't walk into it on the specified boundary side, which is the bottom. So I'm going to change that back to a 5. And if you want to know more about these, just check out my last tutorial because I go over that in a little more detail. So now I'm going to come down here to the collision object and it holds everything to do with my collision code. So first these functions here labeled with numbers, these are my what I call routing functions and what they do is they they basically route when I look up which tile I'm standing on or which tile I'm colliding with. So to just give you a string of events that connects these things together here, I'm controlling my player object. He's going to move into the ceiling, and he just collided with the tile. The tile space he was standing on when he collided with his top tile was a 1. So I take that 1, and I search for the function in my collision object with a 1 in front of it, and it turns out to be this function. So whatever I put inside this function is the collision code that's going to be executed for this tile. So the one routes me to a function that handles collision with the bottom of a tile, which is why I get collision on the bottom of this tile. So for all these different tiles, whether it's a one or a five or a four, that value corresponds to the root function or the, the routing function. Not the root, but the route, the routing function. And inside each routing function is narrow phase collision detection specific code and the response code. So that code looks like this, and once again, I went over this in my last tutorial pretty in-depth, but I did change one thing from the last tutorial, so I'm just going to take um, bottom collision, for example, and that's what, what I've been talking about using this as an example here, this top tile. This is the code that executes to detect and resolve narrow phase collision with this top tile. So basically, the only thing I changed is Instead of determining the direction or the movement vector of my player using his velocity, which is liable to change depending on how you calculate your velocity and when you 
set your velocity in your game loop. I'm actually calculating his vector of movement based on his last position here and his current position. So it's basically the same thing as using velocity because it's basically telling you how much you moved between the last frame, where your last position was and where your current position is. And basically it's just saying, if I'm moving up, then I can collide with the bottom of this tile because this and this, these are both the same tiles here and I can't collide with this tile the right way if I'm moving down. I can only collide with it if I'm moving up. And actually I was supposed to refresh this and that'll set that back to a five tile. So, but basically I can only collide with this tile if I'm moving up into it. I can't collide with it from any other direction. So that's all this takes care of here. And then I have the collision code inside, but if you take a look at it, you'll be able to figure it out. If you want an explanation, check out that last tutorial I did. So now I'm going to come down to the cool part. I'm going to skip over most of this. Um, I'm going to go down to where I actually do broad phase collision. I think I'm looking at it right now. There's a lot of code in here. Try to find the start. I got a lot of comments in here, so if you want to download the source code, definitely go ahead and do that because... I give a pretty detailed explanation of what's going on with all these comments you see here, but I'm not going to read those to you now. I'm just going to explain what's going on here. So in order to get my player character to collide with these things on all four of his corners, and as you can see, he collides pretty well on all four corners and solid when it's solid side to side contact as well. How I'm doing that is I'm detecting collision for each one of his corners. So basically, I get I check to see which tile each one of these corners is in, and if it's a collision tile, I then use the routing function with the value of the tile that I'm standing in, which happens right here, game.collision, and I hand it the value of the tile I'm standing on, and then I just do that collision resolution code that I showed you up there. But first, what I have to do is I get these corners, and that's really simple. Basically, I just put in the different corners of the character the real space physical coordinates of the character's corner so this gives me the the left side of the character so this right here if i want to get the tile space that this top corner is in i have to get the left column and the bottom row to determine what that tile space is so it's the same as the stuff i showed you in the last couple tutorials it's just corner specific so to get the left column that this guy's corner is in all I have to do is say math.floor, I get the left side of the player, I divide it by the tile size, and that's it. I use math.floor on it to round it down to a whole number, and that's it. And then for the bottom row, it's the same thing. I just hand in the bottom value, so the, the value of the bottom coordinates of the, the player character object, and I divide it by the tile size. So pretty simple, and then I just, to get the value, I plug those into the map using my formula to convert 2D world coordinates to 1D tile map array coordinates, which is this right here. I just take the Y tile, or the row that the character is standing in, multiply it by the number of columns in the map, and then add the column that he's standing in, or the X tile position. So then I just do a simple if statement to check whether or not that tile that he's standing over or that this corner is over is a zero, because if it's a zero, it's just a gray tile, a walkable tile. I don't want to do collision on that. And if it's not, then it's a collision tile. And I just hand that value into the collision object to get the routing function. And I hand that function the player object and the row and column that he's standing in. And it resolves the collision, detects narrow phase collision, and resolves it. And then here I also do some output just to show what the last tile that I touched was, the last collision tile. So that's basically what all of this is. And then again, if I'm going to be moving, what is this? Moving to the left. So this block here tests to see if my player is moving to the left. So if I'm moving to the left, the corners I want to test are the left corner, the bottom, and the, oh wait, actually, what is this? Left column, bottom row, and top. Okay, yeah. So if I'm moving to the left with my player here, like this, the sides that I want to test are the left side, and then I want to test the bottom and the top. So basically, if you combine the left side and the bottom and the top, what do you get? You get 
the top left corner and the bottom left corner. And it's the same for testing for other directions. So this is the code to test to see if he's going right. So if my character is going right, what do I want to do? I want to test this top right corner and I want to test the bottom right corner. So I need to test the right column, the bottom row, and the top row. And I just use this simple code every time. And this is a lot of code. You could actually condense this pretty easily. You just make functions to take care of all this repetitious code here. I just wrote it all out so you guys can get the source code and look at it and see exactly what's going on. Then down here, I handle collision on the y-axis. So the y-axis is the same thing. If I'm moving, let's say, I think this is moving down. Or actually, it's moving up. So if I'm moving up, what points do I want to check? I want to check the top left and the top right. So I got the top row, the left column, and the right column. So pretty simple stuff. If I go ahead and take out some of this code here, let's see what happens here. If I go ahead and I just take out the Y collision checks, come down to the bottom. You got so much code, it's hard to actually see where the blocks start and end. So I'm gonna come over here, refresh the page. Now I have no more Y collision detection. So I still have X axis collision detection, still have Y. Everything seems to, oh, but there we go. Something went wrong. See, now I'm not checking on my top right and top left corners, and I'm only getting, for sure, collision detection response on the left sides. So this is why you need to check all the directions of movement and all the corners, but don't be freaked out by these huge blocks of code. They're not going to take up too much memory, and there's a lot of early out code involved in this. For instance, if he's not going the right direction, he's not going to check any of this code. So only two of these are going to run. Only he can only move two directions. So let's say left and up or down and right or, you know, a combination of one direction on both axes. So you're only ever going to check for collision in up to two directions max. So it's really not as much as it looks. And like I said, you can optimize this stuff and make it a lot smaller than it already is. And that's it. So basically, this is a really simple kind of relaxed example and relaxed review of this code because I kind of went over all this stuff in the last tutorial. Let's see if I fixed that right there. Yeah, added that code back in and now I have collision the way it's supposed to be. So this was just a relaxed review of this example. And it, it's basically just here to give you guys the code you need to make top down tile based games, really, because that's what this is. And Keep in mind that if you're just going to make a game like this with square tiles, square blocks, there are simpler ways to do this. But what this method is designed for is extreme modularity. So when you use this method to do your tile-based collision detection and response, what you're gaining by it is not simplicity. What you're gaining by it is the ability to swap out these tiles with slope tiles, curved tiles, half tiles, all kinds of different tiles as easily as coming up to your collision object and adding in new collision detection methods. So say instead of top collision, you want to add in top slope collision. You could easily do that just by adding a new routing function, a new tile value to your map, and a new collision handling function. So it's that simple if you want complex collision maps. One thing I recommend if you do take this approach as it's going to use a lot of different tile types is to have a separate collision map from your actual tile map. Like the tiles you're gonna display, have a separate map for that and then have another map that just handles your collision tile type. So this would be like my collision map and then I would have another map where all of these were just ones so I could draw nice solid shapes or nice solid colors or whatever my tile graphic is over those and I don't have to worry about matching up the values of my collision tiles to the values of my art tiles that I actually want to draw to the screen have users see. So that's one thing I would I would say if you're going to use this method you should probably separate your collision map from your graphics map. But that's really it. So hopefully I think I think I'm done here. I think I explained it all pretty well. The last tutorial really covers this stuff in more detail. And hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully you get on my GitHub and download this code and mess around with it for yourself and take a look at all this commenting that I did to explain each individual block of relevant code here. And 
that's it. All I can say is I hope you learned something and stick around for the next video because I'm going to be going over how to do slope tiles and half tile. Maybe I'll do maybe I'll do like half tiles one day and slope tiles another day. How about that? So stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys next time.